Hey, welcome to today's episode of Content Creation Made Easy. I'm your host, Jen Liddy. Today we are talking about how to outline your content to make sure that it's driving people to the right place. Um, you want to do this in a way that works not only for you, your personality, uh, your style, but also to get you the ROI that you've been wanting. You're spending effort, time, money, energy on creating your content. You're looking for a return on the investment of all that. And so today we're talking about how to create content that's aligned so that it gets you the return on investment that you're making because you are not here to be a full-time content creator, right? Okay. That's my job. That's not your job. Your job is to do other things in your business. So let me take you back to last week for a moment. I unpacked in the episode right before this one how important it is to make sure that your offers align with your business, your personal goals, your financial goals, your business goals, but also your personality, your time, and your energy. And I also shared in that episode how my membership was not doing that for me. And I made a decision in September to five weeks later, close down by the end of October. If you're interested in that whole story, the whys of it, uh, what it means to align and offer with yourself, go back to that podcast episode. It's the one right before this and check that one out because it might be really relevant. You might be feeling like one of your offers is not doing the work it's supposed to be doing in your business, or you're just not in love with it anymore. It's not really feeding your wallet or your soul. But remember that once you know your offer aligns with you and your business, then we can talk about how to align the content you create for that offer so that you're getting the return on investment. Because remember, that is why we create content. We have to align it with our offers because we want to make money. That is why we're in business. We're not here for a hobby. We are in business to make money. And that is nothing, uh, you know, that is not something that we need to gloss over. I really want to talk about the fact that a lot of us spend time in offers because we either feel like we should, or it's what other people are doing, or somebody told you that that's how it needs to be, but that's not true. And if your offers are no longer feeding you, then they're not aligned with you. So once your offers are aligned, let's talk about aligned content. Aligned content does the following in your business. It creates no like and trust. You've heard that already. I remember the first time I heard like the KLT factor. What is that? But you know this already. Like it helps uh, your audience know you, like you, and trust you so they can eventually shift into becoming clients or customers, right? Uh, aligned content situates us as an expert and authority in our field or our niche or our area. And aligned content moves people along the journey so they eventually get to the try, buy, refer, and repeat. And if you don't know what I'm talking about with the try, buy, refer, and repeat, go back to my interview with Phyllis Nichols. She and I talked about what's after the no like, and trust factor in your business, in your content. So go back and check out that one if you don't know about try, buy, refer, and repeat. Okay, so when your content is aligned with your goals, then you're driving people to something that's working. That's the whole point of content, right? Now, we don't want content to be a huge waste of time for you. And a lot of people tell me that content feels like a huge waste of time. There's a lot going on when you're creating content. So today, let's talk about how to think about your content in a very strategic overview so that you can plan it out so that it aligns with your offers and it feels um, strategic. It's not splattery. It's not like a Jackson Pollock painting. It's not spaghetti being thrown against the wall. So I created a framework of sorts to help you plan content in a way that's aligned. This is something I've never shared before. I created this framework specifically for this podcast. And at the end, I will tell you actually how to get the framework if you'd like to have it as a Google Doc so that you can open it up anytime you like. So let's talk about this framework. The framework, I'm calling it the PAIR checklist, P-A-I-R, because we pair your content with your offer so that it moves people along, gives you the ROI, and is aligned. Now, the goal is to keep people engaged, eventually leading them to the offer that's aligned for you. And so everything comes full circle today. Aligned offers, aligned content, they really go together. Now, before we get started today on the actual checklist, I'm going to take you through it. I'm going to give you lots of examples. Do not feel like you have to check off every single aspect of the pair checklist for every single piece of content you create. 
once you get better and more comfortable with creating content using this checklist, it's going to be more natural for you. But even if you focus on just one of the four elements I'm going to train, uh, teach you today, your content creation is going to be so much more effective, so much better, and so much easier for you to create. So let's go and dive into the pair checklist, pair up your content with your business. So I told you first I was going to outline the framework and then I'll give you several examples. I just love giving examples because it really helps people see how this works in real life. So let's start with the P in the pair framework. P is the purpose of your offer. What does the content you're creating move people to? So think of P as purpose. It's your offer, it's your why, it's the reason, it's the goal, it's the objective, however you want to think of it. You want to think to yourself, does this content align with the program or offer or business objective I've created? And the reason I had to put this in there, it seems so natural, but a lot of people don't create content with this in mind. They don't think about their purpose. They're just like, shit, I have to put my podcast out this week. Crap, I have to send an email. And then they just send something, but it's not strategic. That's a humongous waste of your time, energy, and your content capital. So start with that P of purpose. Moving down the checklist, A is next. And A is my favorite word, audience. These are the people in your audience. These are the humans that you're speaking to in your content. So you want to ask yourself, does this content speak to the exact right people for this offer? And if you don't know who your people are and you're still trying to speak to everybody, and I'm not even talking about demographics or niching, I'm saying, do you understand the people that are right for this offer? I'm going to unpack this a little bit more for you in a few minutes, but the second piece of the pair checklist is audience. Do you know your people? Okay. The third piece of the checklist is the issue that people are having. Now this, you might not like to talk about the pain, but I'm telling you, people need to see their problem mirrored back to them so they understand that you are, you really get them. Uh, the other thing I want to say about the I is you might not solve for pain. Your content might be all about an experience that people have or an adventure that you provide. That's totally fine too. Just make sure it aligns with what you get for people or provide for people. So the question on the I is, does this content address the issue that's relevant for my people and the programs? So is it relevant for the two things that came before, the audience and the purpose, right? The fourth piece of the checklist is the result. That's the R. This is the promise, the outcome, what your people will be able to achieve or accomplish or attain after they go through your offer. Does the content explain how people in your program are helped? Does it explain how it makes their life better? That's your goal for your content. Now, you don't have to hit all four of those things in one, say, um, you know, real, that would be impossible. But you want to start thinking about, does my content align with the, pur the purpose, the audience, the issue that they're having, and the result that they want? It's really so simple, but we make it so much harder than it needs to be. So let's break down how this actually looks in real life using this pair framework. Now, for each part of the framework, I basically ask myself two questions. What does it make sense to talk about in my content? What does it not make sense to talk about in my content? And you're going to understand so much more about content after I take you through this. So let's go back to the P in the pair checklist. I'm going to use the example of seeding a new offer. I have a launch that I'm, uh, I'm not, it's not a launch, I wouldn't say. I have a new program that I'm starting in January. It's called the Magnetic Words Power Group. It's basically a group for five people who want to cross something off their list. Uh, like, I want to write a lead magnet. My website needs to be updated. I'm working on my welcome series. Something that you know you can't get done by yourself. You'd love to have feedback from a copy and content expert. You want somebody to give you feedback on your messaging. That's the offer we're playing with today as I unpack the pair checklist for you. So what I'm starting with here is, okay, I'm talking about this new offer. I actually only have three spots left. What do I have to talk about in order to fill that offer? Well, the purpose is helping people 
uh, leverage their ideas into words that make money for their business. That's what the Magnetic Words Power Group does. So my P, my purpose, is to get people in who want to learn how to leverage their ideas into words that make money for their business. It makes sense to talk about strategically thinking about your content. Uh, how your ideas are powerful, but if you don't take action, they'll never see the light of day. Like you could have that lead magnet in your head for 10 years, but if you don't get it out of your head, maybe you need some help. It doesn't matter. And I could talk about like the mindset, right? Like having visibility or being able to write your first shitty draft and get it out into the world rather than uh, dealing with perfection. So that's the stuff that it would make sense to about sense to talk about in terms of the purpose of my program. What it would not make sense to talk about anything too tactical, uh, SEO specifics. This is not an SEO program. So if you're getting into it because you want to specifically learn SEO, this is not the right place for you. Instagram hashtags. As I lead up to launching the, the program, I'm never going to be talking about something as specific as hashtags or my process for making reels because it doesn't help. It doesn't serve the purpose of the bigger program that I am selling into. I hope that makes sense and was a, is an example of how you can take these specifics and use them in your business. Let me give you another example. Let's go to the A in the pair checklist. That's for audience. And the question you're asking yourself here is who's the person that this is right for? Who are the, what are the qualities of the entrepreneur that this program is right for? What would it make sense to talk about? Um, it would make sense to talk about um, that thing you've had on your list forever, but you know it will impact your business, but it has never gotten done. You know that if you did that lead magnet or you updated your website or whatever it is that you have on your list, you cross it off and it could be done. Uh, that would impact. That's who this is for, right? This is for people who want to learn how to do it themselves. They want to get the skills so they can repeat and rinse and repeat and rinse. And they don't want to spend tens of thousands of dollars on a marketing firm or a copywriter. They really want to learn how to do it themselves. So that's the audience. That's the kind of content that would be appropriate to pair up with my audience. Um, it doesn't make sense under the A part of the checklist to talk about like, oh, the varied platforms that are available to you or uh, anything that gets stuck too deep down in demographics. That's not what this program is going to do. This program is more speaking to people who want to like actually get help for something. So again, when you're assessing what to talk about and what not to talk about, you're considering the audience, what, what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. That's where you want to spend some time. Let's move into the I of the pair checklist. This is the pain. What does your offer alleviate? The symptoms, the problems, the challenges, or the experience that you want them to have, right? So it makes sense for me in, in uh, seeding the Magnetic Words Power Group is to talk about like, oh, are, is the issue that you're having, you're feeling like you're going at it alone, you don't know what to say or how to say it, uh, you think you're a bad writer, you don't trust yourself to create, or you believe you can't take action on your own. I would be talking about those particular pain points to lead somebody to that particular program. Uh, it would not make sense to talk about convincing somebody that the content marketing is necessary. If somebody comes to me and they think content marketing is a waste of time, like that's not what this group, that's not what this group will do. That's not what it, who it's for. This group is for people who have already bought in that they're like, I want to master my content marketing and I want to know how to do it. And I want to be able to alleviate this pain anytime I need to create content. Uh, the other thing that, uh, the other pain I wouldn't be talking about is content planning. That's not what this particular program does. This program does something bigger than that. We take a chunk of a thing going on in your business and we get it done with feedback and co uh, copywriting and lots of support, but not content planning. Okay. So let's talk about the last piece of the checklist, which is the R in the pair checklist. This is the result. What is the promise, the potential, or the actual outcome that people can achieve in your program or your offer? Uh, what would it make sense to talk about in my content to align it? Well, the impact that leveraging your ideas can have in your business in terms of dollars. That would make a lot of sense. Or how once you've created an asset, like you uh, tweak your website, or you've written that welcome series, um, or you've done that lead magnet, how you have it forever, and you've learned how to create it, and you can just tweak as you need to tweak, right? Like it would make sense in my content to talk about that. 
What it wouldn't make sense to talk about is uh, content planning for a launch because somebody in the program might be working on a launch and that would be something we could address, but it's not the specifics globally in the program. The program helps anybody coming in. So if there's five people in the group, there could be potentially five things. One person might want website, one person might, might want launch, one person might want lead magnet, another person might want welcome series, another person might want a, a content strategy. So that would be five different things. So if I were to only talk about one of those things, that is a waste of my content ROI. So when you pair up your content strategically and intentionally, you spend a lot less time wasting your content capital and your content efforts. So think about what you've got coming up in the next four to eight to 12 weeks in your business. How can you pair up your content so that it actually does the heavy lifting for you, moving people where you want them to go on their customer journey? Now, if you'd like a copy of this checklist, go to jenliddy.com slash pair, and you'll get a link to this checklist so that you never have to remember what I said today. This is like basically a little workshop that I gave you here. And so you might be like, oh, this makes sense, but I want to dive in. Great. Go get the link at jenliddy.com slash pair, and it'll all be listed out for you. Like you don't have to memorize this stuff. That's not what you want to take your brain space up with it. All you'll have to do is open this Google Doc up the next time you create a piece of content. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now, if you're interested in the Magnetic Words Lab and you really would love my support, there are three spots left. You can go find out more at jenliddy.com slash magnetic and you can find out information there. If we're closed down, you can get on the waiting list for the next time. As of this recording, there are three spots of five left. I would love to meet you and join you and see if this is, meet you and see if this is the right piece for you to join us in getting something crossed off your list. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, it would be so wonderful if you could leave some feedback so that other creators like you and small business owners and entrepreneurs can stop the struggle with their content and just get some relief. I'll talk to you next week. Bye.